Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. I am Chris Short, Principal Technical Marketing Manager on the OpenShift team at Red Hat. I am joined today by the one and only Daniel Messer. He is a product manager here at Red Hat. I'll let him introduce himself. Please, Daniel, go ahead. But uh, before we get started, this show is about how to get started with Quay Container Registry. So, Daniel, please introduce yourself and let everybody know what we're going to talk about. Sure. Thanks, Chris. And, you know, thanks for having me. Excited to be here finally. It'll be awesome. It's very uh, timely. Thank very Jody. Timely. Yes. Yeah, it is. So, hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Messer. I'm a product manager in Red Hat, and I look, among other things, uh, after a product called Quay, which is an open source project, um, like every Red Hat product, and um, really a enterprise scalable container registry. And um, I'm going to walk you today through the process of actually setting it up um, in various different uh, fashions. And along with that, show some of its features, its architecture, and you know, kind of get you started with uh, you know, how you do an, uh, you know, a central registry, which is going to be really important in the, in, the, in, the, in the near term future, right? As we are talking about having multiple clusters these days running, right? And they all need kind of a central place to pull content from. So, Quay is the perfect um, project and technology to actually make that happen. Awesome. Yes. And Quay is such a critical component in my daily workflow, right? Like I cannot tell you how often I am pulling images from Quay on a regular basis. Um, it is a fantastic container registry and has quickly become my favorite container registry. And it's not just because I work at Red Hat. I would probably still use Quay if I wasn't at Red Hat. So that's that's probably the best endorsement I can give of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's great to hear, um, and it it really hits home with a with you know that um, notion that you know registries are usually in the cloud native discussion somewhat in the background, right? Mm -hmm. And we're always talking about Kubernetes and the stuff that runs on top of Kubernetes and different personality the technology has, but um, the registries tend to be a fairly um, vital component, right? Um, mm -hmm. So if, if you are um, running your stuff of a central registry and that registry is down, um, you'll notice pretty quickly, right? So oh, if yeah. your registry turns read only, um, you know, you cannot deploy anything. You cannot update anything. You know, no rollouts are going to happen. Um, and if your registry is write only, you're going to have a lot of angry developers on the back of your heels as well because they can't push their artifacts right. uh, to a central store. So, um, tends to be a little bit of an underrated topic, I would say, but it becomes super important as we are moving into this future where, you know, with OpenShift, it became so easy to run a cluster now, you know, um, in your own machine, on your cloud provider account, in your, you know, virtual infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, the only thing that's going to lead to is more clusters are going to pop up, right? And they want to have a central view on, you know, where's the software that I'm going to run stored, right? Because who yeah. does it? And um, you also want to make sure that that stuff isn't full of security vulnerabilities either, right? right. And you want to make sure that only the right people have actually access to this stuff too sometimes. So um, that's where Quay becomes sort of uh, in, the, in, in the picture and, and becomes really critical to the, the whole um, OpenShift multi-cluster management future that we are embarking right now. Yep. It's, it's one of those things where if... If you don't have, it's like storage almost, right? Like if you don't have this registry, you're not going to have a critical component that you need inside your infrastructure, right? Like if you're always reaching out to the internet for something, or if you're always pulling, you know, thing, you're, you're going to have something break and you're not going to have access to it at some point. So having this stuff internally, having it running on your own infrastructure is vitally important in my opinion. Yeah, and like even if you have one registry and it's not of good quality and availability, right? You'll notice pretty pretty quick, real right? quick, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh, I can't pull. Wait a second. <laughs> Everybody's you know ripping their hair out about that error and pods crash looping or errors um, putting images. Um, you know, and it's not something you can do something about usually because it's not your registry. So you right, know, yeah, yeah. Like, how you get your own registry. Yeah, so let's 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 show people real quick, right? Like how to dive into like Quay.io, the internet side, right? Like the public facing side, and then if you want, you know, we'll continue on diving deep into what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so let me share my screen real quick. I just want to show people like it's if you haven't heard, um, Docker Hub is changing its policies around image retention, so. 
uh, come November 1st, I believe the uh, guidance has been if your image hasn't been either pulled or pushed or anything touched essentially in a certain amount of time, they're getting it off their platform essentially. So, you know, if you've got this project that you only release every six months, guess what? You better be very careful with your your Docker Hub, uh, you know, usage because you might very well end up without access to that image. So, you know, you come to this page here on Quay.io, you know, super clean looking page. It's not very obvious. Like these two buttons are like try for free on premises, right? Like that gets you started on what Daniel's going to talk about. Try for free in the cloud, same premise, but just different infrastructure, right? Uh, but if you want to create your own account real quick, all you do, hit the sign in button up here. I know that's counterintuitive, but then hit create account. And, you know, I'll just create a simple, uh, you know, dummy account real quick. Uh, my email address. No, wait, username. Uh, let's just do barf. Email address is me at chrisshort.net. And then we'll just make up a password real quick with my fancy handy dandy password manager. Thank you very much. Nope, I don't want to actually sign in. I want to create. Dang, have it, where to go? <laughs> See, now this is where it gets interesting, right? Like, now my uh, content. Nah, uh, uh, uh. Nope, go back. Okay, create. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really that simple, folks, right? Like, just dive in. You know, these passwords aren't going to match, but, you know, let's just do it real quick. And I can tell you um, that it will be a very, very simple process once you don't get interfered with by your password manager. Wow, that was super weird behavior. But anyways, yeah, I'll save that for sure. Thank you. Registering, we have sent you an email to activate. Done, right? Like, I got the email. We're going to open that up. Get the link to confirm, copy, pasta, done. Hi, you know, and now it asks you some information about yourself just so you know, right? Like, hey, blah, 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 this is my person and so forth. But once you get past that, it's all yours. You just log into Quay.io from, you know, Docker. You do a Docker login from Podman. You do a Podman login, Quay.io, and you're off and running with your new credentials and everything. And it's that easy. Um, so, you know, hopefully this will help a lot of people right now that are in that dire situation where it's like, oh, my gosh, what do I do with my images? Right. Like this is a quick way to just get you going. Now, Daniel will get you going the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what you've just seen is actually um, Quay.io, which is a hosted Quay instance. And it's based on the very same technology that, you know, I'm going to showcase today. And exactly. Show you how to use on your own premises, your own server, your own infra infrastructure. So um uh, it is battle tested at that scale, right? So we literally have, you know, thousands of users um, and, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of images, petabytes of storage in the back end that's all managed um, with Quay.io. The same code base is what makes up the Quay product, right? So um, let's just do a quick intro on, on, on uh, what Quay is and then, and then mm -hmm. let's dive right into uh, the, you know, hands-on stuff, uh, hands-on part of this, um, of this stream. So... Um, who am I? I um, already uh, kind of told you, right? So I'm a product manager. I actually also do other stuff at Red Hat. Um, uh, so next you to Quay, other I Quay stuff? Sure. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I, uh, I'm basically responsible for that operator hub IO thing. Um, yeah, that thing. That's kind of important. <laughs> yeah, it, it tends to be, right? So it's our upstream operator catalog, right? And the operator framework is like all the components that make operators in the workload space work nicely on OpenShift. So I'll, I'll do that stuff in my uh, you know, time left of the Quay, basically. Um, you know, doing this you know, since almost two years now and um, been with Red Hat for, for quite some time um, as well. Um, my newest hobby project actually is my son. So he's- That's a good project to have. Nice, nine months old. It is a fairly in, in, involved project. I'm super happy though. And uh, good. yeah, good. obviously been in the Linux space for a long time as well. So go check that out, you know, um, github.com Quay. So our, um, uh, open source upstream present. It's a fully open source project. Um, and then there's also the other uh, part of my work, which is the uh, operator framework. And there's actually going to be some overlap today because I'm going to show you how you use an Quay operator to deploy Quay on your OpenShift cluster. 
So um, what are we going to do? Um, let me just quickly run down, you know, what Quay is, what Quay can do, and, and how Quay is working from an architectural perspective. And then we're going to install it on a single machine, right? That's going to be really straightforward. Um, and that's like your typical, you know, at home, you know, POC laptop demo install. Sure. And then we're going to go a bit more serious, right? We want to make Quay HA, um, so highly available, um, load balance probably with no single point of failure. Um, and um, that's going to be how you know customers run this in production and don't run into the situation where you know you have image pull errors all over your cluster because your registry is kind of down or you know you know uh, spread out it. across you know the the, the the fruited plains of the globe yeah exactly <laughs> right and speaking of the globe right um, we're going to take that deployment in the third part of the demo and um, are going to replicate it across to the US so I'm going to start in EU uh, which is where I'm based I'm based out of Germany so nice. I'm going to host this in a AWS location in, in Frankfurt um, and uh, but it could really be an example of you know your data center and then we're going to have another data center in the US uh, at which we will also install Quay and we will start to replicate the content across the pond right and see how that works nice and, um, if, if we have time left and, you know, we can be flexible and we can, you know, depending on the interest of people in the stream and comment section, skip some parts. Um, but if you have time left, I also want to show you how you're going to go up and get up and running with Quay super straightforward with uh, the Quay operator, which is something we are currently rewriting from scratch, actually. So with that said, what is Quay, right? So you heard it, it's a registry. Um, I like to actually call it a registry platform because you know a registry can push and pull images. I mean, that's not really um, uh, that complicated anymore, but as soon as this thing starts to become central to multiple clusters and multiple teams and multiple departments um, and serves production workloads, you need to think about a, a couple of uh, additional things, right? So you need to think about multi-tenancy, security. Uh, it would be really nice if you build automation on that as well. Um, and it would be really cool if you could store not just container images, but basically all cloud native artifacts out there, right? So um, that's what Quay does, right? And, you know, the usual disclaimer, um, there is Red Hat Quay, which is the, you know, commercial product that, you know, Chris and I are basically selling. And then there's Project Quay, which is the open source equivalent, right? Same right. code base, everything open source. Um, that's what you can download and, you know, play around with as well. Mm-hmm. Cool. So yeah, you can totally run your own registry, like just locally on your local host with Project Quay, if you want. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Just to kick the tires on it, POC it, whatever you want to do, it's right there for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more resource intensive than your usual, um, you know, local Docker distribution registry. And that's right. basically because um, Quay has been, you know, it's been optimized from the, for from the start for scalability. So the initial right. footprint is a little bit higher, right? Um, so you want to have at least like you know four gigs of memory um, and and want to you know one spare CPU core, you know, not unusual anymore these days. But I just want to throw it out there that it's not like a very tiny thing. Um, it's actually going to gobble up a little bit of capacity on your system, um, but it gives you a lot of in return, right? And some of this is what you see here, right? So um, you know it's the same thing that powers Quay.io, which is our, uh, which is actually the first um, you know private registry out there. Um, so before Docker even introduced, um, you know, private repositories, Quay had that, and Quay provided that. Uh, so that's how Quay started. And, you know, Quay.io is the online service uh, with the same functionality. So Chris just showed you how you sign up. When you sign up and you don't need any um, private repositories, the thing is free. Um, so you can store your content there. You can build your uh, container images there as well. You can make them get scanned against known vulnerabilities. That so, I think is the best feature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by far, hands down, bar none, in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? Like having a vulnerable container container image out there is a big problem. Mm -hmm. Having your registry point that out to you is a huge one. Yeah, absolutely, right. So that's what the security piece is uh, going to do for you. And we'll show how you set that up and how that works today, right? So um, I think without you know further feature setting here, uh, I'm basically going to show you, um, you know, how you get started, right? So um, this is what you know Quay uh, looks like from an architectural perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So Quay is basically um, a uh, Python uh, uh, layer, um, which is um, ena enabling uh, you to store uh, content according to the Docker v1 and v22 protocol. And um, it has several additional parts to it to make that actually a fully fledged uh, registry. So. Um, because it's like um, containerized uh, from the start, so you actually start Quay in a container, right? There's nothing to install on your host. You just launch a container. 
Um, it runs on every infrastructure. Um, you know, you can run this with you know, Docker, Podman, on Rail, um, and you can run this with Kubernetes and OpenShift um, in, a, in a container orchestration platform, right? Um, and then Quay needs a couple of things and actually to do its job, right? So the first is um, you need to have a place where to store content. Um, that's usually an object storage. Um, and then there's also a database which uh, handles some of the uh, metadata that is involved in the process of actually serving container images, you know, and also models, you know, different teams and organizations, your automation settings, and all the integrations that that Quay has. And there's also an in-memory catch involved that's usually involved when you do uh, builds. Um, and build is a feature of Quay where you kind of give it your Docker file, right? Or you hook it, you hook up your Git repository, and then once you push to it uh, or you push the Docker file, um, you know, Quay builds a container for you. So these Quay builders are making use of Redis. Um, then there's Quay itself, obviously. Um, that's the registry uh, uh, and compliant OCI registry endpoint. And um, Quay has a feature called um, repository mirroring, uh, where you can actually tell it uh, to mirror a repository of your choice. Um, for instance, to pull content closer to where it's needed or pull it behind a firewall, right? So that's yeah. what these mirroring workers are going to do. I'm going to you know, look at how that works as well. And then there is Claire. Um, Claire is actually a sister project of Quay, and it's a security vulnerability scanning solution for container images. So um, when deployed um, with Quay, Claire will look inside the images that Quay stores and will tell you um, if there is a known security vulnerability in that image, either nice. in that operating system base part, right? You know, or now actually as of recently also in your application level dependencies. So we started with Python there because that's kind of our home turf, right? Quay mm. written in Python. Um, Claire can actually now look into your uh, Python um, uh, uh, dependencies and Python applications and you know, shipping in the container and can tell you if those dependencies also have known vulnerabilities, right? So you're also kind of looking at the application level now. Yeah, uh, I was I was adding a bunch of uh, Hugo containers, various mm -hmm. versions that I use uh, based off the website, and like having having built those like months ago, potentially had those Docker files being written, you know, months and months and months, maybe a year ago. Mm -hmm. Having you know, like pulling those Docker files in and like making sure they're good, and then publishing that image, and then having it scanned by Quay gave me just this highest degree of confidence that. These are good. I'm going to be able to use these for whenever and however long I need until the security scan fails and I have to rebuild, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Claire is going to continue doing that, right? So Claire is going to be um, constantly receiving updates to its databases where it you know, has all the vulnerabilities that are known stored. And um, once those get updated, you'll also get a notification if there was previously unknown CVE, for instance. Um, discover that actually matches the signature in your image, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's not just this one-off thing, it's actually constantly looking at your content. Um, and yeah, um, Claire also needs a database and uh, um, uh, to store some, some metadata during its processing. But other than that, like this entire layer here is completely stateless, right? Which is makes it super easy to put it behind a load balancer and just scale it out by adding additional copies of it, right? Ideally on other hosts and then mm -hmm. You know, the, the way this usually gets used is behind an HTTPS endpoint, um, so you have encryption as well. So there's content ingress coming in, you know, from other registries, from, you know, your system with Portman and push, um, or we have users that are actually going to use the UI uh, or the API, um, which is completely um, equivalent to what the UI does. So everything in Quay is actually API driven and that console you'll see in a minute is essentially just, you know, uh, Python front end calling and using the UI. Um, you know, and that's that's how you uh, have a central registry. You know, other clients can then use it, or Kubernetes clusters can use it. OpenShift, obviously, and OpenShift you have an additional integration, which I'm not going to show today. We may do another stream on actually how to use Quay with OpenShift. Um, but there are two operators on, on OpenShift that make it make for some real interesting use cases. Uh, one is going to cover security scanning and vulnerability right in your cluster, and the other is going to automate you know Quay with um, with um, OpenShift. But uh, yeah, more to be known on that and, and, and maybe another session. Yeah, for sure. Hey. Um, I just wanted to ask real quick, can you share your slides with me? Just add them so I can toss them out on our slide share real quick. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, let me actually just do that right now. Um, yeah, thank you. People, people already said, like, that slide right there is gold, and they want that. So <laughs> I'm 
I'm doing I'm doing the audience justice here. Gotcha. All righty. Sweet. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Anyway, there's nothing confidential in there. Um, yeah. yeah, I can just check them out. Um, cool. So let's Point get away. And All on learn. one. Let's do it. And let's do it, right? So I have a, um, a system here um, that has nothing else installed than CentOS, right? Um, you know, CentOS 8.1. Um, so nothing out of the ordinary. And we are going to basically build this, right? Um, we're going to install a Postgres database, um, Quay can use Postgres among other databases. Mm -hmm. And we're going to install Redis, um, which is uh, also a requirement for Quay. And then um, we're going to configure Quay to use the local X4 file system. Now, that is actually something that is only meant for POCs like this, right? So um, that's really just your local demo. You don't want to make your Quay registry dependent on your local file system because Quay has been built for object storage uh, in mind. And it'll, it'll not be very happy with, with the limitations of a local file system in the long run. So, you know, Got just do this for that one-off demo. And Fair enough. Uh... Cool. Um, that's great, right? And uh, we'll also have, um, you know, an SSL endpoint. So we're gonna have a certificate installed and then I have already prepared the DNS record at points to my uh, machine. All right, so let's jump onto the console. This is readable if it doesn't. Um, uh, go up one. Uh, audience, please let me know if there's issues there. So let me just resize this here a little bit. Cool. All right. Then um, I prepared, like a good uh, TV cook already, an instance. Um, uh, Multiple questions here in chat already, <laughs> but go ahead, keep going. I think this will actually answer some of them. Yeah, so um, I prepared an EC2 instance, you know, nothing fancy, two cores, um, eight gigs of memory. As I said, you want to do six gigs at minimum, um, especially in those cloud environments, you don't have swap space, right? Um, so mm -hmm. if you run out of memory, you'll be killed. <laughs> so, Own killer, goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also already have a public IP here, right? So that's what I prepared. And I also prepared a DNS record. Uh, for that, so it's going to be quay standalone dmesser.io, right? So, nice. and that's going to resolve to exactly that 165 address that's th this instance, right? Cool. Okay, so let's get going. Um, going to log into that um, thing and uh, walk you through what you need to do and install quay, right? Yes. So, the first thing we're going to install is some, some dependencies, right? So, um, I'm going to run Quay as a container, right? That's the official way to do it. So I need to have something that runs containers. And what better to use here than our good old friend Podman? Podman. And Podman is a do. rapper. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm also going to do the Postgres client. I'm going to run the Postgres database actually in the container too. Um, but I'm going to install the client as well to connect to the database um, in case that's needed. Totally makes right. sense. And then uh, wget, uh, because that com comes in handy um, every now and then as well. Huh. Yeah. Some people curl, some people wget. There's no right way to say it. <laughs> we'll, we'll do both today. Um, oh, actually. sweet. We'll uh, awesome. Curl. Uh, so, yeah. I think what's funny is curl's there and wget isn't. To yeah, kind of tells you, yeah. If the signs, like, if the signs of the times aren't changing in the Linux land, right, like, net stat to ss cur yeah. you know w get to curl right like all these things are changing right so like we're at this weird transition point where there's still this group of folks that are like oh crap i haven't learned curl yet it's actually a lot easier mm -hmm. than you realize um, it's it's yeah. almost as uh, easy as w get now so yeah a lot it of is. advancements has been made there so don't fear the don't fear the curl lib mm -hmm. curl is a good thing all right, cool. So everything installed. Um, all right. Beautiful. So first thing I'm going to install is the database that Quay is going to use. That's going to be a Postgres database. So let's create some directory where the data is going to be stored. Um, it's going to be usually more lib um, pgsql data. And I'm going to mount it into the container in a second uh, that I'm going to run. So one thing that um, I will do here is, um, and I'll apologize in advance, um, like seriously, is I'm going to run that container as root. Um, oh, simply because there is um, there are some components here that do need um, privileged ports, like ports under 
1024. And those need to run as root even with Parkland, which is actually really nice and good at um, running stuff as non-root. Right. Also going to do copy and paste here at some point. So I just, you know, adjusted uh, permissions to that directory a little bit so the Quay container has access. Um, then we're going to set a couple of our environment variables, right, um, to make the create command um, not so long. So um, the database container name is going to be Postgres. The database name is going to be Quay. The username is going to be Quay user. It's going to have by default Oracle permissions on that database called Quay. That's going to be the password. Um, I'm not super worried about sharing this with you because um, you know that port is actually yeah. um, it's just you know internal. You can't reach it from the outside. And that's the same password here. So um, yeah, um, we are going to run a database now, and um, I'm saving a little bit of typing here um, because I don't want to bore you with my you know abysmal typing skills. And well, that is a container run command, right? <laughs> so you know, part <laughs> one, give it a name. Uh, we detach for the container because we want to run it in the background. We inject some known environment variables uh, into that container that is used during the initial part of the database setup that only runs once um, that, that container starts. And it's going to set the user, the password, uh, create the default empty database on which the user will have all permissions. That's the database that Koi is going to use. And then there's also a super user here. And then we're going to publish that port. Um, and then uh, we're going to mount that um, directory that I created before, which is the Postgres data directory. Um, take notice of that little Z switch here. Um, that's going to make this thing uh, fly with C Linux enabled, which is enabled on the platform on this platform. And then um, we're going to push the official Postgres uh, 10 image from the Red Hat software collection in version 10 based on the RHEL 7 base image. Um, that's just you know me being lazy. I could have used you know the version based on RHEL 8 or like a different Postgres version. Doesn't really matter. Um, Quay is pretty happy with everything starting with Postgres 9.6 onwards, right? So let's, uh, let's run that. And um, that's going to pull the container and um, launch the database. There's nothing else in the database, right? Uh, Quay will actually uh, set all of the stuff that it needs uh, in there up for you. So that container is started. Um, let's take a look. There it is, running happily. Um, let's check the logs real quick if I did any errors. Um, looks healthy to me, starting a server, listening on port 5432. That's the well-known Postgres port. Sorry. And um, already read everything out, but okay. One thing I want to know is the IP of this container. And that's a portman thing, uh, because um, I'm not going to be able to reach this um, port inside that Postgres container from another container that's also running root. Um, at least not with the host system. So I'm going to inspect uh, that container. I'm going to um, look at the IP address that Portman assigned to that container in its internal network, which is this one here, 10.80.80.02. And that's the IP I'm going to use to connect Quay to this database when Quay is also running in the container. Nice. All right. That's stage one. Um, let's actually try to log in real quick um, so um, to see if, if that also works and if I didn't type anything. The password, so I'm going to use that IP. Um, actually, I'm not sure if I can do this from, from the local host. Let me actually um, use the local IP here to be safe. Yeah. So, but for the from container con to container pr communication perspective, it's definitely going to be the portman internal IP. So, from the host perspective, I need to use the host IP because that's where the port is. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, I will do. Um, connect uh, to the database called Quay as the Quay user. And the password was Quay demo Twitch. And there I am. Cool. So that thing is up and running. Stuff works. Database is already there. I can log out of that. Cool. Step one completed. Um, now I'm going to basically um, deploy Redis. Very similar. I'm going to create um, a directory in which the Redis container is going to store its data. Um, I'm going to give that the appropriate permissions. And I'm going to run Redis, um, which is also available in the Red Hat software collection. So nothing out of the ordinary here. Redis is super straightforward to set up. You know, again, you know, run a container, make it detach as a daemon, um, restart it always um, once it's coming down. Um, 
there's just one port that Redis needs, which is 6379. That's where Redis will be um, serving its functionality. Um, give it a name, and then we also mount that directory um, with CDN of support enabled. Redis is also really small, um, really easy to install as well. So we won't use it because um, we're not going to run builds on this install, uh, but effectively it's a requirement that the installer checks for. Okay, so let's see if that thing is up and running. Yep, there it is. And then let's, let's check for any errors in the pod. Looks good, nice ASCII logo. Uh, Server is now ready to accept connections on port 6379. Um, let's actually find out what that IP is. Um, it. That's the IP. And just to refresh our memory, uh, the Postgres IP is going to be that, right? So it's 8803 and 8802. All right. So we're just one step away from actually running our Quay instance. Um, one thing I want to do here is I want to give um, that Quay a valid SSL certificate. And one awesome, super straightforward way to do this is using Let's Encrypt. So let's actually get a real trusted certificate from Let's Encrypt um, in like one minute. Um, for that, I'm going to quickly install a web server on this system. Um, if you've ever used Let's Encrypt, it's actually um, serving certificates as a service, and it lets you, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, respond to a couple of challenges they will give you in order to, you know, verify that it's actually you behind that IP, behind that host name, um, making that request. So the challenge that it's going to be using here is um, something needs to be created behind an HTTP server. So I just installed an HTTP server um, on my system. I'm going to create a dummy web page uh, for that thing. And I'm going to create a virtual host. So I'll make that web server listen on port 80 um, and uh, make it be known under the server name Quay standalone DMS. This is standard Apache stuff, you know, it's the same thing since 20 years probably. Um, so not so surprising. I'm going to basically start the web service now. And now I'm going to download um, the Let's Encrypt bot. There's a bot called CertBot, which will automate the retrieval of the SSL certificate for you. So it's from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, um, and um, it's downloaded. It's, as it's awesome. The, I love Let's Encrypt. Uh, if you have not heard of Let's Encrypt, Please, please, please. Uh, it is an Electronic Frontier Foundation project. They are literally encrypting half the internet now, I think, um, or like something like 40, some like high 40%, I think, last I heard. Uh, Janessa Peterson, if you are out there, please ping me with stats if you have them. But the, the idea is that you get a cert uh, based off, you know, a number of verification methods. One of them is DNS. One of them is spinning up your own local HTTP host. Um, the DNS method is the preferred method because that's obviously harder to mangle and, you know, hack kind of deal. Um, so you can get your own, like, valid, publicly signed, like, in, you know, all the browser registries uh, cert for free. And you just have to cycle it 90 days. Every 90 days, you got to life cycle it. That's all. And they make it super easy to do that, too. So... Like, I mean, it, it, it's a lot to like wrap your mind around, you know, public key encryption, but uh, public key infrastructure, I should say, but like it is worth the time and investment and in investing in, you know, learning Let's Encrypt and how to use it and all your needs. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's a and, great, and, I mean, there's tons of companies that use it in prod right now, you know, <laughs> so it, it's not like it's something brand new. It, I mean, it's been around for a few years. It's well established. It's very stable. Yeah. Very awesome project. Right, so that's the command I'm going to use to just request a cert, cert port auto dash dash Apache. Um, and that will recognize my Apache installed in the system. It'll request a certificate from Let's Encrypt using the ACME protocol. And that comes with a challenge. And the challenge will say, create a web page called XYZ behind your web server right. um, um, and have, make it have ABC as content. Mm. And um, that bot will respond to that challenge and create that website for me. So the only thing that I need to enter here is kind of my email address, which is something um, that I mean, I for this call. case, you don't necessarily have to because you're tossing the box later, but exactly. yeah. And I actually already registered with that, so I'm going to um, 
uh, I'm gonna cancel the, uh, um, you know, do you want to be um, getting messages from us or already yeah. getting messages from them? Exactly. Right. Then they asked me which is my domain name is quay demesso.io. So I'm gonna Perfect, say yeah. one. And it says now obtaining new certificate, performing the challenge. It's an HTTP challenge, which is, you know, create a website and mm -hmm. make sure it's you. Yeah. And that's what the thing is doing automatically. So what it's actually doing is creating a dot well-known directory in your root, you know, path of your web server. And it's creating this special file that only it knows about during the transaction. And then it goes and checks for the availability of that file. And that's how it verifies that the server is known good place for this certificate. Right. And it already works. So it's already done. And it has put my um, fully trusted certificate now um, in this location. Um, and the private key uh, is in this location, which is an ETC that's encrypt, right? So that's it. I have a valid, fully trusted public SSL certificate now that I'm going to use for my Quay instance. So I'm going to shut down that web server again because its port is going to collide with Quay. Port is also going to be port 80. And um, actually, I'm going to um, uh, copy those certificates out of that directory to my um, home directory. Um, mm -hmm. I need to do sudo for that because, um, you know, obviously, uh, it has been, it is not re uh, readable for normal users. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's locked down to root 066, like any good key should be. Or I'm sorry, zero six zero zero as permissions. Yeah, for Shamad folks out there, there's a chat uh, thread about change mod all up in the uh, <laughs> chat right now. <laughs> so let me just save the save the certificate as ssl.cert. The private key is ssl.key in my home directory. Um, I'm gonna change the ownership of that one to CentOS so I can download it uh, in a second to my to my computer. Um, so let me log out real quick from this machine and um, I'm going to SCP this to my downloads directory and I'll tell you in a second why I'm doing that. So that's the cert coming down and that's the key coming down. So because the way we are going to configure Quay is with a UI and that UI um, is based on the web page. And mm -hmm. to this UI, I'm going to um, upload those certificates and uh, this key. Um, which, is gonna, which is gonna create a config bundle, which is, you know, Quay's main config file, it's a YAML file. And to make it not so boring to create by hand, uh, we have a UI for that. So let's go ahead and actually um, log in um, to uh, Quay.io uh, because I'm gonna install the official Quay product. Um, it's behind a login, right? As you can imagine, um, only paying customers will um, use that. Um, and it'll get a login. I have a login as well, which I'm going to not share with you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste it here. Logging in uh, to the custom portal. That's where the login is actually stored. Um, you know, as a paying user, you already have your own login. Right. We paste. Um, all right. That didn't seem to work. Did I paste wrong? Did you? Hmm. I don't know. Password Red Hat plus Quay is definitely the login. That is weird. Um, you copied that out of. I saw sorry. you do it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, no, I'm an I'm an idiot. I'm I'm trying to do this on my own machine, obviously. So I need to log back into the system, right? So. Oh, I'm duh. Yeah, <laughs> Login as Podman. So um, yeah, I don't know if Mac OS. I'm on Mac, right? So I'm not even really sure if something happens if I enter my sudo password wrong three times. So let's not do that again. Um, let's do sudo Podman login, um, and then a user, which is um, available to paying customers, um, to get the real Quay bit. If I am typing correctly, I'm going to log into Quayo with that user, and uh, that looks much better. There we Login go. succeeded. Cool. All right. So, what we are going to do is basically run the config app of Quay. Um, so, I get that nice config UI, right? 
Um, let me do that through the Portman run. Um, give it a name, Quay config. Um, actually, it doesn't need to run as privileged um, because the port is, is um, high enough. The port is going to be 8443, 8443. I'm going to detach for it. Um, and it's going to come down of the Quay um, image, which is on Quay.io slash Red Hat. And then Quay, and we're going to run 330. That's the main Quay image, right? That's where everything is. Um, so I'm going to say the entry point is config. That's going to launch the config app. And I'm going to basically um, set a password here because that um, app will have a password protection. Mm -hmm. And um, that's downloading. So that chugga, container is chugga, 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 chugga. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, it has the complete Quake product in it, right? So right. Except for Claire, everything is inside that container. And the way you run the different components of Quay is just launch that container multiple times of the same config directory with a different entry point, right? Mm -hmm. the config entry point doesn't need any data because it's a stateless app, basically. But all the others need um, a pointer to where the config YAML is. And we are going to create that config YAML right now. Right now, he says. Slides are uploading right now, folks. Yeah, actually, uh, Chris, I'm not even sure if I deleted all those um, standard template slides in the back. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it's still in draft status, so. <laughs> oh, it's 132 <laughs> slides. That's why it's taking so long. <laughs> exactly. You may want to remove those. Yeah, yeah, let me toss those real quick. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. I use the standard Red Hat template, and it comes with like 200 example slides. Yeah, it does. And most of us are just like, oh, yeah, I might need one of those. And we just start adding to the top of the slide deck. And we just leave the rest behind and forget to delete them all the time. I, I, you know what? It'd be interesting to see how much Google Drive space we waste on just leaving standard templates around. <laughs> all right. OK, so that container is started. And I'm going to switch to my browser here. Um, and I'm going to go to um, quay-standalone demesser.io. You can't see it right now because the address bar is hidden. But I'm basically going to um, um, type, this is unsafe which is something I learned from a colleague. So instead of you know, hitting that advanced button and say, I accept the risk, is you can literally type, this is unsafe, you know, one, one word. Wow. And that Chrome, or in my case, Brave, will you know, forward you. Huh. All right. So Really? Wait, 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 wait. Do that again? Yeah, we'll do it again one more okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. Like, I need to see this because uh, Cockpit and Chrome are not getting along right now for me. So yeah. like, yeah, I need to get that okay. fixed. Cool, so I'm in the setup app now, so and I'm gonna basically start from scratch here. So the first thing that um, Quay needs is an empty database and you can do Postgres and MySQL. I'm gonna do Postgres. Um, now I quickly need to remember that IP address, right? Um, uh, so that's from the container, it's 8802. I'm gonna paste that in here. Um, the Quay username was Quay user. The password was Quay demo dash Twitch. And the database that I'm going to use is just be called Quay. Now I'm going to hit validate, and that will basically test if that container can reach the database and can access that as a user. Mm -hmm. And it will fail because we actually need to um, enable an extension in Postgres, that PG uh, TRGM uh, extension, um, first for Quay in order to uh, in order to, for Quay to use the database. So that's fairly easy. You basically just literally copy that command. I'm going to do one more login on my uh, on my database. Oops, I think I mistyped. There we are. I'm already in the database. I'm going to paste that um, SQL statement, create the extension, pg underscore trgm. Beautiful. Ooh, I'm actually not. Uh, I need to be super user. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, put on your cape. So I'm going to be doing that as Postgres, right? That's right. the super user that this image uses. Same password. Um, I'm already in the create database. One more attempt, and there we go. Ta-da. Log out. All right. Switch back to config app, and let's try this one more time. And there it works. And now it's creating a schema, bunch of tables. Um, and now the second step is going to be the super user. 
super user is like root and Quay can do everything. So I'm literally going to call this guy super user. It's going to be my email address. Not that that really matters, but I'm going to um, basically um, use a passport here that you are not supposed to know. And I'm going to create that super user. All right, that's the config app. Um, now the last stage is actually configuring um, my system here. And um, uh, we will basically only do the very, very basic setup, right? Um, so the one thing that I'll need to add here is the server name under which that instance is known. That's quay dash standalone the messer.io. I'm going to basically say I have Red Hat Quay handling TLS, um, so the SSL endpoint. Um, and now you know why I downloaded these um, Let's Encrypt certificates from the server to my uh, Mac here, because I need to upload them in the config app. So I'm going to do that real quick. There's the SSL cert. There's the SSL key. And uh, the config app will actually validate that. All right. The only other thing that I need to add here is um, Redis and the Redis hostname. It's literally that IP. Um, so I have a bad memory, so I need to go, go back and look at that again. It's 8803 um, in that other Redis container that we just started a minute ago, and then paste that here. And um, that's basically it, right? Um, we'll configure more options in a bit uh, in that other HA setup, but effectively, um, that's all you need. In that default configuration, um, Quay will make use of local storage. Again, this is not supported um, for any kind of production usage. Um, and please use object storage uh, at all times when you want to you know, get your data back. But for this demo, it's going to be fine. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's basically it, right? Uh, you can set a bunch of other stuff here. We'll walk through this in more detail. Oh, yeah, you can set up GitHub authentication, Google authenticate, all the providers and everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do. Right. Oh, so yeah. I'm just going to leave with the default now, say safe configuration changes. And you see it actually validated that it can connect to Redis as well, that it can touch the storage, um, that the SSL certificate kind of makes sense. And then um, that's it. Um, it's going to give me a table, um, which I'm going to download. And that is what we call the configuration uh, bundle. So I'm going to put that in here. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to close this now and um, stop that container because I don't need it anymore. No container needed. And uh, now I'm actually ready to uh, install uh, uh, Quay itself, right? So I need to copy that config bundle up there. So I'm going to quickly do that. Um, Quay config tar gz. Um, oh, did it save it um, like that? Apparently it did. Um, did it? Okay. Yeah, but it's fine. All right. <laughs> That's Mac for you. Yeah. Well, you know. And um, I'm going to save that to my machine, which is going to be CentOS at uh, Quay standalone dmesser.io. And then I'm going to put it in that user's home directory. Um, if I can type Quay correctly. As a product manager, I should probably be able to do that. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uploaded the config bundle from my Mac back to the server. Um, log in here. And um, now we are going to basically um, run Quay. So like the others, it needs a couple of directories first. So I'm going to um, create a directory where Quay is going to store its configuration. Small Quay config. And then also the directory where it's actually storing the container content that I'm going to push. Um, so I'm going to um, cp that config bundle to mount uh, Quay config. Go there real quick and extract it. There's only three, three things inside. It's literally the, oops, uh, pseudo, right? Uh, it's literally the config YAML, which is a YAML file. I'm not going to show that to you because it will contain some sensitive data. Um, but effectively, it contains like the database connection string, um, the host name, you know, the SSL search, mm -hmm. um, you know, the configuration, and then this is the SSL search and the key as well. All right, um, going to remove that odd-looking toggle. Um, 
CD back home. And I'm going to make sure that the container uh, user, uh, which is of ID um, 1001 as a proper unauthenticated container should be, um, is going to be able to read that config directory. It only needs read permissions, right? And I'm also going to do um, a read, write, execute permissions on the storage directory because obviously it needs to store um, its uh, container, which is there, right? Um, so I could have also changed the ownership of that. I, I use file system ACLs for that um, to add, you know, um, additional users um, access to an existing directory. Um, something you learn when you are uh, doing Rails certifications. All right, now we are kind of ready, right? Uh, let's start to run Quay. Um, it's going to be another sudo portman run command. And I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So sudo portman run, container name is going to be Quay. Obviously, you want to restart in case it fails. I'm going to publish the port 443 um, and port 80. That's why it needs to be a privileged container. Um, I'm going to set a kernel setting here uh, to increase the maximum connection settings on the TCPI stack in the kernel to 4096. Um, that's coming from our official docs for something like this. You would actually need, not need that, but um, you know, in, uh, Quay can handle a lot of connections, so your system should be configured correctly. Um, it's going to be a privileged container because of that port, and um, I'm going to mount the config directory. Um, into the container on the con stack. And again, notice the Z for Z Linux, Z Linux. And then another volume, uh, which is going to be that um, storage directory and I'm mounted on the data storage um, that I'm going to detach for that. And um, yeah, run Quay. No entry point means um, it's going to run the default entry point, which is going to be our lovely Quay server. So that was much faster because obviously Portman reused the already cached image. Mm -hmm. so let's take a look. There it is. You can also watch it start. Um, start starting with Quay can, can take a little bit. Um, and I will complain about a couple of missing frames on the config YAML, but not, none of that is really um, a problem. Um, but after a minute or so, um, that Quay instance is usable. Nice. So this, in theory, like how does this relate to a disconnected install? what you're doing right now. It, it's very similar, but you got to bring in some images, I'm assuming, right? Literally, you only need to bring in uh, the Quay image, right? Okay. Um, and the Claire image if you want to run Claire as well. But but that's about it, right? Um, the thing with Claire today is that it actually needs internet connectivity um, to download the... Um, uh, signature updates and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so that's a limitation of Claire V2. Um, we are actually releasing a new version of Claire, um, which is going to be Claire v4, kind of skipped version 3, which was never really released. Claire v4 is a complete rewrite. Um, it's much uh, more extensible, much more uh, versatile than Claire v2. And one thing it's going to bring us um, in October is basically um, disconnected capability, right? So in log, I see now Quay is kind of up and running and running through its normal loops here. I'm going to control C out of that and I'm uh, going to go to my browser and open uh, Quay standalone dmesa.io. And that should look very familiar, right? Um, so that yeah. almost exactly like what you just showed. Exactly. Me. Yeah. yeah. Great account right there. Sign yeah. in if you already got one, the whole nine yards. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to log in as a super user real quick because I'm not going to spend much time here. But effectively, um, that's the super user I created in the config uh, stage and the password that I set there. I'm mm -hmm. going to sign into Quay. And there I am. I am a uh, can use it Quay. I have Quay running. I can now actually start push and pulling images. Container image re uh, registry and scanning all in one. Yeah, okay. there you go. There you go. So that's pretty much it. Um, you have a working container registry now. Um, you know, you can create repositories um, and say, you know, this is a test. Make this public, and uh, they have a repository. Um, there's nothing in here, so I cannot pull anything. Right. So nah. we can maybe, you know, quickly. Look could at you it. could you use Scopio to like port something over real quick? Um, I don't have Scopio maybe. installed. Oh, no, um, that's fine. Um, but you know, if you if you give me the command, I can probably just do it. You know, um, no problem. But uh, no, nah, don't worry about it. So there's a question. I would love to see how Daniel might map org and team to a repo. Right, like, and that's a very good question. But I think, in that regard, you would like use GitHub authentication and do your 
you know, organizational management through GitHub, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you can, um, you can do multiple things, right? Um, so we have integration with OIDC providers like GitHub, for instance, mm -hmm. or Google. Um, you can do oh, yeah, all, yeah. Um, and all kind of stuff. Um, in general, this just authenticates users, right? So it's not going to map, you know, your GitHub organizations or your, your all your GitHub organizations magically to, to Red Hat um, QA organizations in the QA instance, right? You're going to do that one by one. So it's actually a setting that you do on org. Uh, setting so um, or in an org basis. So here I'm in my own um, organization with just one repository, mm -hmm. and I can basically say external logins, and I can authorize stuff like um, uh, like GitHub um, or OIDC providers, and that would then map one, let's say, GitHub org to one of my Quay orgs, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, within an organization in, in Quay, you also have teams to further subdivide access, um, and uh, basically. Uh, um, um, limit people from, from accessing stuff, right? So it's yeah, a one-to-one -one so... mapping. It's, it's, it's not like automated where, you know, it's going to be kept in sync with whatever you have access to in, in GitHub, for instance, but, um, yeah. So there's a question way back in chat. I'm scrolling up to find it real quick. Uh, you know, it's past here. Uh, where to go, where to go, where to go. Uh, the key. No, that was from yesterday. Try it in. Nope. So there, oh, crap. I know I should have asked this earlier. Um, nope. Where did it go? I thought it was before the t-shirt discussion. Yeah, there's a whole thing going on here. <laughs> um, I'm going to just download an example image um, and push that to my little Quay here to show Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, here's a question. Does Quay allow robot accounts to sign in checked in images that meet certain criteria to make it more obvious and to ensure it's not changed after it's been evaluated? Right, like I guess this would be part of a CI pipeline, right? Like where like, I know that my static analysis, my dynamic, you know, scanning and all my stuff, all my stuff has been done to it. And I'm just gonna let this robot account through, you know, Jenkins or, you know, Tekton or whoever, just upload this image for me. Does it allow for that? I'm sure it does, right? Um, yeah, so basically robot accounts um, can do anything a normal user can do. Um, so it's basically an extension of your personal login, right? Um, to um, Quay, and um, what it's um, what's what's going to happen is that um, you are basically going to um, give it permissions, uh, like you give user permissions, but it, it you know alleviates the need for you to actually share your password. So an order what account is really just a programmatic access to Quay, exactly for use cases like CI pipelines. Um, so. Um, Whatever you can do, a robot account can do for you as well. Um, it just needs appropriate permissions. A robot account is, works at the organization level, so a robot account cannot access multiple organizations at once. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to just push my example image here to Quay, and um, uh, that did fail because I'm actually not logged into that. So ah, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's important when you change over to Quay that. So there's a Etsy, uh, what is it, containers.conf file that lists the uh, re order of registries that it's going to pull from, right? And uh, putting Quay first and making sure you're logged into Quay is a very important process in switching over to Quay, right? Like Quay, Quay requires a login. Uh, yes, you can pull from, you know, public Quay image, image registries all day long, but, you know, if you want to upload, you got to log in just like you would for Docker Hub. So, you know, put Quay first, put Docker Hub after, log into Quay, and off you go. Right. And I just pushed my image uh, successfully, so that works. You can store data. Um, and uh, I'll also see that um, image now here, 171 megabytes. Um, and uh, I can actually look at the layers of what's inside that image as well. So um, apparently my Quay is working and I think, I wanna leave it at that real um, demo, uh, quick demo of you know, standard on Quay because that's gonna be um, what you do on your laptop. That's not what you're gonna do on a, a data center basis, right? Boom, yeah. So let's get into the, the big deal. Exactly. So 
what are we going to do next? We've just built that, right? We brought a bunch of containers. Um, yep. Then, uh, you know, uh, we had a Quay after we inserted a certificate and created a, a config. So what we're going to do next is deploy this in an HA fashion, which is going to be um, very, very similar, um, just mm -hmm. the last part multiple times. And I'm going to simulate like a real setup like customers will have with data centers that have multiple failure domains uh, and have existing database services. So I'm nice. doing this at the example of AWS, but effectively you can do that do all of that in any cloud environment, any data center environment, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm doing yeah. this for convenience here because I just ran out of data centers and um, I basically uh, want to have a pre-existing- The real problem. I ran out of data centers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's such a great problem. I'm going to use the cloud real quick. Um, okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use um, AWS um, as free storage. Um, an RDS back Postgres instance, and the lastly cache managed Redis instance. So I don't set any of that up uh, myself. Um, and I'm not going to use Quay to store stuff on disk, but rather in S3. And I'm going to deploy free machines um, in free availability zones. And I'm not going to you know, install Quay on it very much like I did before. And then I'm going to put that behind a load balancer, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's what's going to happen. And there's, you know, as usual with um, the cloud stuff, there's a little bit of overhead, right? So you need to create some security groups here, you know, define um, some subnets um, and, you know, um, you know, make sure that stuff is able to connect to each other and then put the load balancer in front of a certificate uh, and all this kind of stuff. So I prepared some of that already, so we're not using it up too Thank much. you. <laughs> so I mean, we're going to start, right? Um, okay. We have a cool. Database running already has security groups attached. We have um, Elasticsearch running with the right security groups as well. And uh, we have no S3 thing. We have no EC2 instances. So let's get that up and running. Yeah. And I think the two pieces you set up already are the two that take the longest. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And, you know, it's it's really easy to do. There's, there's no value in showing this here, you know. Or, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just walking through the, you know, AWS commands essentially. So I'm going to power off this machine to save some money. Um, all right. Um, OK, so um, I am basically in EU Central One. This is a data center in Frankfurt, which is not too far from where I live. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you that I already have an existing network here, VPC. That's the 10.000 uh, network. Um, it has that VPC ID. And um, that's what we're going to use. So um, the first thing we want to do is create some security groups um, so that um, clients can actually reach um, our Quay instances. So that's going to be very much similar to what you do in uh, uh, data center with configuring fire firewalls. So I'm going to give that a description here, um, allow Quay traffic. And Quay really needs um, um, only two ports, right? Um, so I'm going to call this group demesser quay demo quay sg. Um, I'm going to use that VPC ID I saw earlier. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also going to give it some tags, um, which you don't need to worry about right now because I just want to make it really easy later to delete stuff. OK, um, that's it. Then I'm going to. It's going to create a security group with this ID. And then I'm going to allow ports. Um, so Quay basically needs port 80. Also rise security group ingress. Um, you can see I have already done this once, um, as you can probably imagine. So I'm going to open port um, 80 protocol is TCP, um, and the port is 80. And it's going to allow that traffic from the entire internet. This is only hard the first time, right? That worked. Yeah. Also going to allow. It's always hard the first time. <laughs> yeah. I'm also going to allow HTTPS four four three, and I'm going to allow eight four four three, which is going to be that port of the config app, um, which is only run for a little while. All right, that's quite. Um, let's do Claire. Um, Claire. Um, basically um, needs two ports as well. I'm going to rename this to Claire Security Group, allow Claire traffic. So this is this particular security group ID. And um, I need to allow 
port um, 6060, TCP port 6060, um, okay. but only internally. Um, so Claire is not going to be exposed to the internet. The Postgres database and Redis isn't exposed to the internet either. Right. Um, so um, only Clear, uh, only Quay will communicate with Claire uh, directly. And so it's fine for the security group to restrict traffic coming from the VPCs. Um, oops on the VPC's uh, um, IP address, right? right? So, and I'm gonna put this rule against the correct security group, which is that one of Claire. It's port 6060 for the Claire API and it's port 6061 for um, the Claire health checks. I realize my screen sharing session is, is not quite aligned with my console window. So now you see everything. Oh, yeah, it's kind of spilling out. Yeah, it's spilling out a little bit, but, but that's about it, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, now the next thing I'm going to create is an S3 bucket. That's where Claire is going to store its data. So I'm going to uh, create a bucket. Hmm. And um, the bucket's name is going to be the Nessar Kuwait Demo EU. Um, it's going to be in this region. So normally, um, Buckets don't have a region, right? But with some new stuff in AWS, buckets are now localized to, to certain right. AWS regions. Depending so, upon, yeah, your storage here and everything else, how you exactly. want to classify it and everything. Yeah, you can lock it down to where that data is just replicated in that region. Exactly. And what I'm going to do now is basically I lock it down to um, the uh, Frankfurt location, which is nice. the central, central one, right? So I have good latency to that uh, 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 location, and Claire's going to be there as well, so we want to have good latency too. And uh, we'll create that. Sweet. Um, so there it is. Now I need to give um, clear uh, Quay access to that um, uh, S3 bucket, right? And I'm going to do this um, by creating an AWS user account um, that only has permissions uh, to uh, that particular bucket. I'm going to call it dmesser Quay demo S3 access. And I'm basically going to um, dump um, that um, user's uh, access key. I'm going to create one and dump this in a file. I'm not going to show you this one um, because that's kind of secret. Mm -hmm. All right, there it is. So I have just created an access key. And then I need to basically attach a policy to this user that makes the user able um, to access that bucket. And I've already prepared that. Um, it's a JSON thing, not very complicated basically say can do list buckets and put operations and bucket location on that particular bucket and everything that's inside. So um, I'm going to assign this policy, policy to the user. Um, first, I'm going to create it. I'm going to give it uh, a name, the Messer Quay Demo S3 bucket. And the policy document is in a file that I just showed you which is literally called I am bucket policy .json. <clears throat> All right, now I have that policy and the last step is to attach that policy um, to that um, user that Quay is gonna use um, to write uh, stuff in the S3 bucket. Username is the one that I created before, dmesa Quay demo S3 access and the policy is actually the same name um, but it's requiring the AWS resource identifier ARN. Um, so I'm going to just quickly copy and paste that here. And now I have a user which can actually write um, to an S3 bucket, right? All right. So that's what I just did. Um, we created um, security groups, um, we created a bucket, and we created a policy, right? Yep. So the next thing we're going to do is create those instances. And um, for the sake of time, I'm going to actually do this with the UI uh, because it's a little bit um, elaborate on the CLI. Um, yeah. The nice thing is I have already created an instance template, so I'm not going to need to put a lot of data in. So here's an instance template of um, uh, what a typical query deployment would look like. It's um, instance type T3 uh, a large. That's two CPUs and eight gigs of memory, a decent EBS and network bandwidth. It's going to have one root volume, 50 gigs, nothing too special. doesn't need to be high performance there. Um, it's going to have, uh, uh, it's going to get a network interface um, and it's going to 
um, have the ability to talk to the internet by having a public IP, which okay. is um, uh, in it by default, and it's going to be attached to an IAM instance profile, um, which is a neat little trick that I usually apply. Um, that policy will allow the virtual machine to update its own um, DNS record in Route 53. Nice, 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 nice. So again, yeah. you know, nice um, DNS resolution. So let's do this real quick. Um, I'm not going to create a launch template. I wanted to create an instance. All right, so. It's going to be CentOS based. Um, that instance Beautiful. type, um, my key, um, going to be in that VPC that I selected, going to have that storage. And now I'm going to add some resource tags here. So I already prepared all of those. Um, and the resource tags are going to be used by a little script inside the machine that updates its own DNS record. So it's going to be okay. called 1A Cray Demo DMESO.io. And the machine is going to be called DMESO Cray Demo 1A for that particular um, subnet. So and the way I put machines into a certain subnet is with um, uh, selecting a subnet of a certain region, um, a certain availability zone. So I'm going to say 1A, and that's going to be this subnet here, DMESA Que Demo EU 1A. Um, already created this, um, obviously, and then I'm going to make it have um, access to the right security groups. So it's going to be. Um, it's going to be, um, let's say, DMESR. Wow, that's a very weird menu. DMESR Quay Demo SG. Um, so it's going to use the Quay security group. It's going to use the Claire security group as well because we're going to run Claire on the same machine, which is something you don't have to do, but it's actually um, um, just a very easy way to get things up and running. And it's going to allow SSH traffic with an existing security group for that as well. Awesome. And that's pretty much it. The thing will get a public IP address by default. So let's start it. All right. I'm going uh, to repeat this uh, two more times um, in order to get two more instances. So bear with me just one second. So now I'm going to change the host name. The host name of the second one is 1B, which is the ID of that availability zone. And it's going to be called the Mesa Quay Demo 1B. I'm going to make it have an IP address by default uh, in the public space. And I'm going to put it in that existing um, the Mesa Quay Demo EU 1B subnet. And I'm going to put it uh, in the appropriate security groups as well, so that Quay traffic is allowed. <clears throat> Clear traffic is allowed, and SSH traffic is allowed as well. That's it. Second one is on the go. And then uh, these things out. Yeah. One more time, third time's a charm. This time it's going to be 1C, so that particular AWS region has three availability zones. This is just a nice number. Um, you don't get into Chrome problems with this, right? Um, so it's going to be the Mesa Quay Demo EU. U1C. Sorry, this is a bit um, messy. Um, it's just the UI. It's just in your name. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. Let's do clear and clear security groups as well as allow SSH traffic. And then we should be gold. All right, cool. So I should nice. have um, three new instances here. There we go. <clears throat> One pending. No big. Yeah. You just started it. Yeah, they should be. They should be ready uh, in a second. So um, I'm going to log into um, those real quick. Deploy my little um, script um, that updates the three records. Then log out and reboot the thing. So the script will run on the boot. Nice. Okay, so log into the first one. CentOS, um, that IP address. I trust this host. This is my machine. And then I'm copying, then I'm going to copy and paste a bunch of stuff. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, install unzip, um, download the AWS CLI from the official location because it's somehow not packaged for CentOS in the most recent version. So, I'm going to download a zip file from Amazon, unzip that, um, run the installer. 
remove the zip file, and then um, uh, move the script into place, which I should have done before. Um, so um, the script is here in my local directory, and it's called going to call it update route 53. That's the IP. So it's going to be SCP update route 53 with that IP. There you go. Log back in. Let me actually do this right now for the three other machines as well while I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, just so we don't lose too much time. Yep. Put it there. And then there's a third machine and this third availability zone. And put it there as well. Cool. Sweet. All right. So log back into the first one. Complete the instructions there, which is really just moving that script into place and make it executable and then reboot the whole damn machine. All right. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the thing on the second one, the third one too. This time, um, since the script is already there, it will just work in one go. And already prepared this third IP address and my clipboard. Yep, install AWS UI, move the script in place and reboot that system too. And now the third system as well. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, so if I look at my Route 52 records, I think the first machine already um, rebooted. I should have now a 1A record for um, that system. If I refresh here, whoops, there it is, 1A, create demo, demo.io, mapping to the IP address um, that the system got from Amazon without using an elastic IP address, which is uh, kind of nice. So uh, I can give you that script uh, afterwards if you're interested, but it's just a real nice way to actually, um, you know, don't need to memorize those IP addresses. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna um, install Quay again. So I'm gonna log into the first system again with this um, um, DNS name that it's self-assigned. And I'm going to basically install Podman again, my favorite editor, Postgres, and um, my curl alternative, WK. And um, it's going to be really, really similar to what we did before on the, uh, on the system. Come on, packages. Yeah. Actually, I can speed that up a little bit um, because uh, I happen to have a couple of other console windows as well. There you go. So that's not, that's 1B. here too and then as sh into 1c as well and if that works um that also means that the uh, ip addresses have registered correctly and this machines have rebooted and are up and running which is awesome and install that stuff here as well okay let's continue focusing on that machine. I need to log in here to Quay.io as well with the um, secret password. That succeeded. And that actually lets me download um, Quay here too. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run the config app, right? Mm -hmm. and this config is going to do most of the work for you. Yeah, exactly. So we'll basically configure a couple of additional things compared to our initial attempt. We're going to use the existing Postgres instance. We're going to use the existing Redis instance. And we are going to enable repo mirroring, which is a feature of Quay. And we're also going to enable Claire um, security scanning um, so we can actually scan some images too. Right. So. The way I will install Quay and Claire um, on these three machines is I'm going to create a config bundle, right? 
once. I'm going to download it to my machine. I'm going to SCP to all those three hosts. And then I'm basically going to run that same partman command on both of these hosts as well. Um, nice. So that's basically all it takes to run Quay and Claire. You know, prepare a directory, um, put the config bundle in it, and run the container with that directory mounted. That's, you know, in a nutshell, how Quay works. Everything is inside that container, um, inside that pod, and um, it'll work. Nice. Like, I mean, this this doesn't, this seems like a very thoughtful amount of work went into the install process, right? Like getting this up and running seems like uh, the team has put a lot of work and effort into making this as, as simple as possible, given the complexities of running a container or registry at scale, right? Exactly, exactly. It's very encouraging, so, right? Like, I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we're gonna show you that trick again, right? So I'm gonna launch the config app now on the one- Oh, I already figured out the trick, I Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> right. nothing but to show. just so folks understand right like uh chrome by default is doing the thing where it's like no i'm not gonna let you into a secure an insecure site right like just forget it this certificate is not good so for me locally here on my instance where i just spun up a server last night i need to log i want to log into cockpit right and that is you know a self-signed cert it's not going to let me work so essentially what i have to do is this I log in, you know, 9090 as I normally would, and then I add pound sign or hashtag unsafely treat insecure origin as secure. And that will allow you to do that. So yeah, you can now, like before I was using like a developer edition of Firefox, that was the only thing that wasn't allowing me through because I didn't realize this was a freaking option because I'm not a browser genius. <laughs> <laughs> no, just to get people, um, you know, not lose people and all those commands and, you know, and, and you know, AWS UIs. That's where we are right now, right? We have we have the storage, we have the database, we have the cache, we have the virtual machines with the correct security groups in the correct subnets. And now we're gonna install Quay and I'm basically running that setup routine again with that one Quay config part on the first machine. Nice. Select Postgres again. Only that this time I'm gonna paste the connection endpoint of um, that um, AWS RDS instance and. Um, that already has a user, that already has a password as well, and um, that already uh, that will get a database too. So um, I'm going to run on the same issue that I ran before, that we need to um, enable that extension. That's why I'm going to circle back real quick to my system here to log in to that guy and uh, enable that extension. So um, let me just log in here. That's the connection endpoint. Um, the user is Postgres. And the database is called Quay, and the password is one that I remember. And I'm um, going to copy and paste that um, Postgres command in there. That created the extension, log out again, and now I'm able to proceed here. I'm going to set up a super user next um, out of have it, it's going to be called super user. It's going to have my email address, it's going to have my password. And uh, we are back in the config game, right? Cool. So now I need to pay a little bit of attention, right? Because Ola asked me, asked me the server host name. So the server host name is not going to be 1A, right? Because we want to do a HA setup. So remember, we want to basically go to. Um, this picture here, right? Where there's one load balancer uh, across all of those instances. Right. Cool. So I already have a domain, which is called coldquaydemo.dmesser.io. And that's in Route 53 domain. That's actually where the host name um, uh, is now resolving to as well. And I also have a certificate by AWS Certificate Management. And that's going to be um, attached to the load balancer. So Quay itself actually doesn't need to handle any certificates in this case. And I'm going to select my own load balancer handles TLS, which is not recommended. And I'll tell you why it's not recommended. Um, it's because um, when you put it behind a load balancer like that, um, uh, the traffic between the load balancer and Quay will be unencrypted. That's one thing. So I'm just lazy here. The second thing is if you are using an HTTP, an HTTPS load balancer, Quay in its logs will always have the IP of those load balancers and as the client IP who just right. pushed and pulled the container, right? Yeah. So in on production setup, you wouldn't do this. You would actually make a network load balancer and you would do you know SSL pass through. 
but mm -hmm. for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to do this here. A couple of interesting settings that exist here as well. Data consistency, I can make it so that um, a repository polls are allowed even if audit logging fails. Um, so if audits are not available uh, by default, Quay will not work, which is good for enterprise environments, maybe not so good for you. Um, so that's why this is configurable. Redis is also running already, so provided by AWS. I have this endpoint here. Um, that's a free node Redis cluster. It's probably oversized for this, but it's going to be okay. Again, Redis is behind. Um, it's not on the internet as well. It's just purely internal, um, reachable from those subnets. And then this is done in port. Now we're going to implement an enable repository mirroring. And I'm going to show you that once that Quay instance is running. And repository mirroring will make Quay mirror from any kind of other container, OCI, Docker v2.2 compatible registry. Yeah, OCI, Quay. just as long as it's OCI compliant, you're good. Exactly. And we want to make sure that that mirroring process uses HSSL and verifies certificates in the process. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now it becomes interesting. Now I'm going to basically enable um, S3 storage here. Instead of locally mounted directory, I'm going to say Amazon S3. Yeah. And um, I'm going to um, give it uh, the credentials um, from that AWS um, S3 user that I created earlier, where I extracted that JSON, right? Um, yeah. So I'm basically saying the, the bucket name is um, the Messer um, Quay Demo EU. That is what I used before when I created that bucket. I'm going to paste my access key here. Oh, no. Is, is this hidden or not? Um, is that is not hidden, uh, but next one is hidden. So OK, it's, thank God. <laughs> it's not. It's not <laughs> I didn't want you to paste your key live in case it was something like important, right? Like No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> It's, the, it's my worst fear that we somehow yeah. capture somebody key. like using their real good key. And I'm like, nope, you got to lifecycle that now. <laughs> nope. And that's why we created the user specifically for this, right? right. So a special Quay user now in AWS that I created before, just for the purpose of Quay accessing S3, accessing that particular bucket, right? Beautiful. So um, if, we, um, if we switch on the console again, um, uh, I'm going to quickly look at the policy. So that policy only allows that user that I just paste its credentials in the UI to mm -hmm. access this particular bucket. So, you know, Blast Radius is fairly limited already. But again, the config bundle contains sensitive data, right? So yeah. don't hear that. And also pay attention to the S3 host. So the default is S3 Amazon AWS.com. Nowadays, all these S3 buckets have location constraints, and that means you need to actually put the region in the URL as well. Otherwise, yes. this won't. If I don't do this, config app will complain because it thankfully validates all of my config for me. Oh, good. Cool. So action log storage, that's where all the auditing data goes, right? So that's going to, by default, be in, an, in its own Postgres database. We can also use an external Elasticsearch instance for that. Nice. Um, uh, we can enable log rotation. And we are going to also enable security scanning because we want to show care, player, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to create a um, key um, which Claire is going to uh, use to authenticate the Quay. It's not a problem that I show this key here because, again, that Claire instance isn't on the internet. You, you know, you don't have any access to it anyway. I'm going to just save that here externally in an editor, also the private key, um, because I need to upload that later on as well. It right. will ask me to download that PEM file, and I will do that. Um, all right. Um, cool. Close that. I'm not going to enable application registry. Uh, we can talk about uh, that in a minute um, when we have some time and something is um, you know, processing and we are waiting. Um, I can basically uh, also make it uh, validate emails. I'm not going to do that here because um, that's just a test environment. Authentication, you can, uh, you can use LDAP, um, Keystone, any external JWT um, or IDC compatible application. Um, um, I'm going to use the local database. And that's where you um, integrate with GitHub, right? So you can make Quay integrate with your GitHub or enterprise, GitHub Enterprise account or Google um, for authentication purposes. And then there's a bunch of additional stuff here. I can allow and disallow external applications, allow and disallow anonymous access. We definitely want to allow that because we're going to use that later. And um, we can also restrict v1 push support. Um, so Docker v1 is still supported with Quay. You can still use that with old clients, um, and um, mm -hmm. it'll basically still work, right? Uh, but you can restrict that support just for a couple of namespace, uh, which is um, enabled here. 
I'm going to leave that as a default. So I'm missing one particular entry here, which is the security scanner endpoint. That's where my Claire will live. And I'm already pre-filling this here with the domain name of the Claire load balancer. That's going to be an internal load balancer. Um, it's going to be behind Claire demo that at the Messer IO on the port 6060. That's the port that we put in um, a couple of minutes ago in the security group. Nice. Now I'm ready. Everything checks out. Everything is reachable. That's why it's important to run the Quay config app where Quay is running, right? Because it yeah. will test the connectivity from there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do next. I'm going to download that bundle. And um, it's going to call it um, Quay config app. Um, yeah, what, what is it? Yeah, tar.gz, yeah. Interesting. So I need to pay attention that I'm not mixing up uh, names here. OK. Um, because I already have a couple of files right. that are named like this. Naming things are hard. Yep, naming things is super hard. OK, um, cool. So um, that is um, almost ready to go now. Um, can close this. Um, go back to the CLI. And um, log into the system again. Stop the Quay config container. And um, what I'm going to uh, do now is um, quickly log in um, to the same Postgres database and uh, create. Um, a database for Claire. So Claire also uses Postgres. And normally, Claire would also use its own Postgres instance. But again, I am lazy, so I'm sharing an instance. This is not. Why not? It's already, yes. You know, I mean, mm. <laughs> but it's going to at least have its own database, right? So it's not right. Be exactly. Uh, There'll be some separation. Yeah. Oh, there it is already. So ah, um, okay. a previous run. Mm -hmm. Drop that just to be on the safe side. Create it again. Yeah. And that's Thank it. You. So now that's all you need. Uh, you just need to create the Claire. Like, is the user you're just going to reuse and everything? Um, yeah, I'll show you that in a second. So Claire has right, also cool. a, a config file, right? So, yeah. oh, um, that's right. Duh. Claire is a config file, and we will yeah. basically now uh, look at that config file. Um, we have a um, example um, on the web page uh, already, and. Um, it's uh, something I will uh, download that, that you can download. Um, I already prepared that config file. The only thing you need to do is actually um, update the domain names of where Claire and Quay are going to be. Um, Vitally important. Uh, yeah, um, uh, res um, accessible. So I'm going to paste this here. And we can run through it really quick. So you basically configure the database, right? Um, mm. Ports and stuff is already correct. Um, you basically say, where is my Quay? Because Claire needs to talk to Quay to report security vulnerability and scanning results. Um, then you also need to tell Claire where it's running um, behind which uh, domain, which is going to be Claire demo at 6060. And um, it also needs to authenticate with Quay in some form or fashion, and it's doing a key exchange um, in this um, aspect. And that's the key I downloaded earlier, right? That PEM file that came down from the config app. That's the key uh, which will be used by Claire to authenticate uh, with Quay. Um, so that is um, already there, and that's already um, working. So let me just check one more thing, which is going to be the um, the, the endpoint of the Postgres database to make sure that hasn't changed. Because it's always a long name and um, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Yeah. So okay. it's still the same name, same yeah. password, right? Um, again, I don't mind sharing the password because the database is offline. OK. All right. So um, that's it, um, basically. Uh, that's all the configuration you need to do. Um, now you just need to upload that. So um, I'm going to um, unpack the existing configuration here. That's um, that Quay config um, file. That's just one file because we didn't generate security keys um, or mm -hmm. that's handled by the load balancer. Right. I'm 
basically going to SCP that to my um, to my host. Cool. So I got some questions in chat. If you want to tackle them real quick, sure. Um, <laughs> how how often is Quay released? Like, what's the release cycle look like? I guess is the first question. Yeah, we try to release every um, every three months. Um, we haven't been uh, doing that um, right now because the rewrite um, and everything. We were actually yeah. in a big rewrite process of Quay. Um, yeah. So Quay is written in Python, and we just are transitioning from Python v two to Python v three. And as you can imagine, we're such a big code base that's a, mm -hmm. you know, um, a non trivial undertaking. Right. So basically, um, uh, that's essentially uh, what has kept us busy uh, so far. And um, this is essentially um, what we're going to release in Cray v, uh, 3 4, which is going to be in October. And then hopefully we can get back to that, you know, three month um, release case. Nice, nice. And then the next question was Does the Quay container itself still need root or is it rootless now? It's rootless now. Um, again, this is just me being very, very um, uh, lazy. Speedy, overly efficient. <laughs> Okay. So what I'm doing here, maybe. I'm <laughs> big files in place, right? So it's the same thing as before. I uploaded them with SCP, mm -hmm. and um, there's no um, there's no uh, clear config YAML. Um, nice. I'm actually missing my. Uh, yeah, so I already moved that config YAML um, out of there. So there's a clear config YAML, and there's the security uh, scanner. Um, one thing I just forgot is um, that I actually need to update. Um, well, do I? Yes, I do. Um, there's one thing I need to update in that Claire config, uh, which is um, the key ID. Um, so that is something uh, that associates that PEM file um, with that key. So that is, oops, I should probably do that correctly. I'm doing this on all three nodes now with, um, with um, iTerm, so I would, I should probably do this um, with an eye on all three nodes. <laughs> so. And as we release things, right? Like it is, once everything's set up, you're just updating the image, right? That's a question in chat. Once, you know, unless, unless there's some change, right? Like that would be documented that you need to make in your, you know, existing configuration. It is literally just updating the image, right? Exactly. So um, it's updating the image, but also um, database schema uh, changes. Yeah, that sometimes needs to change too. Right, right, right. Yeah. In a in an AJ environment like the one we are going to deploy, um, I'm just going to paste the correct key here that I was given uh, by the Quick Config app. Um, in a in a HA deploy, you would scale it down to one, and you would update the image. And with that, there is a little migration script running on the startup of the new image that migrates the database schema. Once that's complete and Quay starts up, you can basically um, uh, restart all your um, uh, other instances again with the new image version. But the database schema migration needs to run in a serial fashion, and that's why you shouldn't um, actually you shouldn't um, you should scale it down before um, updating it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I updated the config uh, YAML for Claire um, with the correct key ID. Um, this is how um, Quay knows that an authenticated Claire instance can talk to it and pull images because it will pull all images, right? Um, and I moved those config files in the right locations. So for Claire, we have another uh, config mount, which is mount Claire config. That's where the config YAML is, that's where the security key is. And like before, we have um, a config mount for, for Quay, that's where its config bundle is. Um, and that's pretty much it. I can now um, run Claire. Um, I want to do that first. Um, and I need to make sure I'm logged in on all nodes. So let me just repeat that process here one more time for love. Ah. Um, Podman login dash u um, dash u, which is going to be um, that user. Red Hat Quay. Right. And then it's quay.io. Oh, no, Podman is not installed on this node. You see, that's why. Hmm. Um, Just the one, though. 
Yeah, it's just a little strange, huh? Weird. So we did that on everything. Yeah, me too. Um, maybe we missed that on that. It was one box. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Huh. You know, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Is, is it, so it's 10 to 59, so it should be the correct subnet. Mm. So, and it's it's that 1B. So yeah, it's the same yeah. system. The other one is called 177 and 39 in the end. Yeah. And um, yeah, 177, 39. Um, so. Yeah, you're gonna be careful with those um, broadcast commands, right? Uh, and yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> Abel Schwitz just mentioned in uh, chat, Ansible for the win, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. You, want, you, you can totally, you know, Ansibleize this system configuration process and you know install cloud services and everything, right? Like. Okay. That's that's kind of the purpose of Ansible, the container or not container orchestrating tool, but the 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 you know, configuration management and setup capabilities of Ansible, all right there. Okay. So but yeah, you wouldn't learn as much. You would learn all about like Ansible modules and how to interface with them. You wouldn't learn the guts of setting this all up. <laughs> okay. Now I'm typing on. Well, I'm not typing on this third machine though. This is really really weird. It's. Um, are we using iTerm or? Yeah, I'm using iTerm. Maybe I ah, messed up my broadcasting. Uh, See, it's only it's only that it should actually broadcast. Ah, oh, okay. I know what's going on. Some uh, yeah. Somehow messed up. I'm not seeing. Correctly. Okay, so now poor man's um, automation solution through the Podman login. Um, that's authenticated on all nodes, so that we are actually able to pull down that image, um, and that image is going to be clear first. Mm -hmm. um, and it's. Living on Crater.io. Um, okay. And um, now we're going to launch Claire. Um, Claire is a different image. Mm -hmm. And um, really easy to start. Um, you basically say um, publish port 6060. That's the main API, 6061. That's the um, health check. Um, and then you launch it from that image. And um, you also mount the config. Right, and while that is working, I'm gonna um, basically create a lot a load balancer um, for that um, because um, these are free independent care instances. Claire is also gonna be um, stateless, and I'm gonna create a load balancer for Claire. Um, so it's gonna be an HTTPS load balancer. It's gonna be internal. It's gonna be uh, called um, the Messer. My demo clear LB. It's gonna basically proxy HTTPS, um, and it is going to listen on port sixty sixty. That's the um, clear uh, port that um, Quay will use to talk to Claire. So the load balancer is gonna be available on all three of my subnets: um, one A, one B, and one C. And then it's going to need a certificate. And I already created a certificate, as you can imagine, which is really nice. It's a service in AWS that lets you use something very similar to what we did with Let's Encrypt before, only usable within other AWS services. But um, I already created an SSL certificate that is publicly validated. So um, that load balancer will have an SSL certificate that's valid. It will also have a security group, which is going to be the one of Claire, right? Allow Claire traffic. And then I'm going to point that security, uh, that uh, load balancer to my free Claire instances. So it's going to be DMSR Quay demo Claire targets. And I'm going to point it uh, to instances in a, in a second. Um, the load balancer will talk to um, Claire with HTTP. So it's not encrypted, right? Um, and it's going to be port 6060 as well. And um, there's going to be a health check, uh, which is uh, going to happen via HTTP as well um, on the endpoint health. 
but it's going to use a different port. It's going to use port 6061. So there's a different endpoint in Claire just for the health checks, right? Um, and that's the uh, Claire build balancer. I'm going to add these three instances. And if Claire is running happily, I should see um, three um, valid targets in that very uh, in the target group in a second. Yeah. So at one point, this will basically turn green. Yep. Um, and um, we can peek at the logs of Claire real quick to see if it's um, happy with what it's found. Maybe I did a typo in the config YAML um, or something. But um, that actually looks quite OK. Um, everything started, no error messages. When Query has a problem, it actually fails pretty, pretty soon, right? Um, so that's going to be uh, fairly obvious. So um, that's basically what it takes to run Claire. Um, and um, now we are going to go and run Quay, right? And we already know how that works. So I'm going to run Quay via Podman as well. Um, same settings as before. Um, and uh, it's very fast on the first node. The two other nodes actually need to download that image um, again. And in the meantime, I'm going to create another load balancer, which is the one for Quay, right? Right. So create load balancer, HTTP, dmaster, Quay demo, um, Quay LB. It's going to be an internet facing load balancer this time because obviously we want to have clients be able to push and pull. And that's going to listen on HTTPS. The rest is pretty much the same as before. So it's going to, it's going to be available for instances in all my free subnets. Um, I'm going to use the Quay demo certificate, which I created already. Again, this is also a pre existing certificate that I created before. And um, as a security group, I'm basically selecting the Quay security group that we created before, which is going to allow uh, traffic on HTTPS. Nice. Another target group, um, um, just for Quay. Um, Quay will basically um, uh, uh, serve via HTTPS, of course. Um, the health check is going to be. Um, via HTTP because Quay itself is not handling SSL, it's our load balancer. And the endpoint by which the load balancer determines if it should actually forward traffic to that Quay instance is going to be called forward slash health forward slash instance. And the rest is fine. Um, uh, so the traffic port, um, it's going to be port 80, but it's actually also the traffic port. So let's register those free virtual machines that we created. Hit create. And um, that created the load balancer. So let's see if my Claire targets are happy. They are success. So Claire is happy up and running and the load balancer is forwarding traffic. Now there's going to be another um, group here that doesn't have targets registered yet. So that is apparently still configuring its uh, status. Normally it's pretty fast. i um, not quite sure what's happening here. Um, but maybe the load balancer. Ah, load balancer is still provisioning. So um, this will pop, populate in a second. And when that is all green, um, we have basically um, a highly available Claire, uh, Claire and Quay instance. So the only thing that I actually need to do now is uh, create DNS records, right, uh, for those elastic load balancers. So we create one for uh, Claire. Mm -hmm. So it's going to say create record. And I'm going to define a simple record, which is be Claire demo, DMSRDO, forwarding traffic to our load balancer in our Frankfurt region um, for our um, Claire load balancer, which is this one. And um, that's it. I'm going to do the same for my Quay demo domain. Define a record. The Quay instance is going to be behind Quay demo demo.io. Um, and it's basically going to forward traffic to my load balancer in Frankfurt, which is demo Quay demo Quay. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, 
So what we've did so far is basically um, we created the bucket, we created the instances with security groups and subnets. Uh, we deployed Clear and made sure it's healthy. Um, we deployed a Query Load Balancer um, and uh, probably had health checks. And we deployed Quay and a public load balancer for Quay uh, with health nice. checks as well. Beautiful. So let's see how um, our favorite uh, product is doing. Mm. Sudo hardline logs as a Quay. And um, it looks pretty happy to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can't tell, uh, but I can tell. Um, if it would complain, oh. it would. Executed look. successfully is usually a good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> the litmus test is obviously going to be the target group, right? So if that thing is going right. to be healthy, um, yeah. it's, it's not. So is that law balancer still provisioning? No, it's active. So hmm. let's see. Didn't register the target. Well, maybe I need to do it again. Weird. You know, it's all API calls behind there. You never really know what's happening. I might have just <laughs> not get the right place, I guess. Yeah, maybe. But um, yeah, once that's coming up back green, I will essentially go to um, Quay minus demo at the demesser.io and see if that is working. So that's green. Sign. Happy, um, happy. It's still joy. doing bad gateway, so I think that load balancer is just a little bit behind. Um, yeah. Good old AWS. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. demoing on a Friday too, you know, right? Like so, it just makes it slower. <laughs> yeah. So it could also be cached. So I'm gonna just. Oh yeah. Start again fresh. Um. No, not yet. Still healthy. Yeah. But actually, you know, I think. Um, port 80? Yeah. It should be port 80. Um, okay. Targets, monitoring. I think I did that wrong. So this is not correct, basically. Okay. So I need to um, deregister that. Register, yeah. Basically. Uh, I don't think I can do. I can edit that anymore. Um, yeah, I did a typo somewhere. So let me just delete this guy one more time. And uh, hey, it, it, if if you're not breaking stuff, building yeah. stuff, you're doing something wrong, right? Like it take you got to crack a couple eggs to make an omelet. Yeah. Know? Interesting. Um, it's forwarding traffic um, to. to 443, that's not correct. Okay, then why don't we delete you? Um, Goodbye. Um, recreate you real quick. So this time, um, that's going to be uh, um, correct. So going to forward. It's going to be an HTTPS list now. It's going to be 443. It's going to go in these three subnets. I wonder at which stage I did the mistake, um, but I'll probably never find out. But um, <laughs> yeah, nice. at this point, you can watch it in the video if you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to use the right certificate. Uh, going to use the right um, security group. Uh, probably the routing. So yeah. Well, okay. So uh, Steam Messer, Quay Demo, Quay Targets. Port 80, and the health check is also on port 80. The health check goes to each instance and the health instance endpoint. So, um, register those targets. I probably forgot to click and click this blue button here. And uh, there it's now saying port 80. So, that's there we go. Point. Okay. Um, cool. Done. All right. I need to update that um, Route 53 record, of course, because that's now outdated. Um, yeah. And um, we'll do that uh, while the load balancer gets its act together. Um, and um, we'll hopefully start serving traffic. But um, from an architectural perspective, this is, is probably not too difficult, right? So you put up three instances to share the same configuration. The instances themselves outside of the configuration are stateless. Um, they access the same database. And um, 
you can add as many as you want um, behind the load balancer. Um, and um, oh, so there's no well, yeah, it's not a CD, it's Redis or not Redis, it's Postgres. Yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe you're gonna bottleneck it at Postgres level, right? Um, right. So um, that's usually where where problems are appearing. So. No, let's look at the forwarding rules. Hmm. Still hmm. weird. Well, we have had shows that have ended in complete failure before. We will probably end in complete as well, but I think um, now it has port 80 here, so that is, is makes me more hopeful. But yeah, I mean, the target registration in progress, I think, once that happens, yeah. you might be good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the next step would really be to make uh, this um, go with Jira, but uh, we are out of time, but I'm going to quickly, while this is registering, show you what this would look like. So um, that is the end state, right, uh, of, a locally, uh, of a local region, right, with multiple failure domains. So that could be a data center um, mm -hmm. with multiple failure domains, um, and it would be probably a load balance. So um, geo-replicated Quay is going to work like this. Um, you're going to have... Um, Quay instances that are very far apart. And they are going to have access to the same database, the same Redis, but to different storage backends. And Quay is going to be responsible for replicating content between those storage backends, right? Interesting. Um, so um, the way you deploy this is with something like this. And that's what we have, what we have, would, would have done here in this uh, call. Um, we would basically have the exact same setup in yeah. US East 2, so really far away, right? Yeah. Um, except for RDS and, and Redis, which would obviously still reside in the EU. But the latency uh, to Postgres and RDS isn't that much of a problem. What's actually causing slowdown is bad latency to the storage. And that's why we'll right. have S3 in the US East 2 region. And we're gonna have um, pods with Claire and Quay running there as well. And they're gonna be configured um, with access credentials for both S3 um, buckets, basically. Um, so, and there will be workers starting inside those pods that are starting to replicate um, storage from left to right and from right to left, depending on where mm. it originated. Right? Oh. And then these um, instances are configured to prefer their local storage. So whenever they are um, answering requests, um, right. it will basically um, look, does the object already, so it's going to be a SHA, a SHA block basically, does the right, right. block exist already in that bucket? If not, I fetch it from the remote bucket. If it does exist, I'm going to um, um, fetch it from that bucket and serve it locally. And the way Claire uh, Equay serves content is basically um, handing out pre-signed URLs that are going to end, in my case, on quaydemo.dmesso.io, but it's going to actually redirect to the um, exact HTTP URL to that um, bucket with that blob. And it's going to be, in this case, for clients in the US, going to be that US East 2 bucket. For clients in Northern Europe, it's going to be the EU central bucket, right? So you as a client don't see the difference between, you know, Quay right here and Quay right there. It's all one stretch instance, but you're always going to get storage at superb speeds because they're local, they're coming from your, uh, from your local S3 region. Okay, so that thing registered now. Um, so shall we try again? Yes, well, let's give it a stab. Well, how about that? There you go. There you go. So um, that's our highly available um, uh, load balanced uh, coin installation. With Claire, um, with, with S3 Claire. backing, with RDS, fully exactly. load balanced. I mean, this is cool, man. I'm glad you did this stream today. Yeah, should we maybe um, end on one interesting thing, which is going to be the reprogramming um, with security scanning. Should we, should we maybe do that? OK, yeah, go ahead. Let's create a uh, quick repository, um, because we enabled reprogramming security scanning. So let's actually prove that this works. Make it public. And I'm going to configure this repository to be a mirror of a different repository. And um, I'm going to do that in the settings. I'm going to say the repository state is not normal and also not read only. It's going to be mirror. That means you cannot push to this repository. It will always be filled by Quay with content from a remote repository. Cool. And I will basically configure that to be um, 
And that's going to be a little bit of an exception, right? I'm going to, I'm going to basically <laughs> do, I'm going to mirror Quay itself to Quay. So I'm going right. to mirror the upstream image, which is behind Quay.io project Quay slash Quay. Yeah. So um, you can keep the latest local image of the project and just update it as you need it because it's already there. <laughs> exactly. So there's an image behind that. That's the upstream up open source version of Quay. I'm going to just mirror one tag, which is Qui-Gon. So you can see how the engineering team is kind of into Star Wars. Um, a bit. You can um, you know, set sync intervals for mirrors. Um, a user is going to be um, a robot account doing that mirror for you. So you're not going to share your own um, credentials. I'm just going to create a robot account here uh, that's going to be used for that. Um, that repository is public anyway, so there's no mm -hmm. way to so it's going to be fine. I'm going to enable mirror. I'm going to start the mirror now. And you can see in the logs that this is actually going to start to work. And um, it would work if I had done one thing, which is actually starting the mirroring workers. So oh, I feel, yeah. Uh, well, but it's really easy because, you know, it's, it's, it's all just one more container, right? Mm -hmm. So we can start mirroring workers as well by saying portman run. And again, the Quay image, but a different endpoint, which is going to right. be called mirror. It's going to fetch from the same config, so everything else is going to be the same. So that will start mirroring workers. And the task of these workers is to look at the Postgres database, look at outstanding mirroring tasks, and start to mirror content from a remote registry to us. Beautiful. Wonderful. I'm going to start that uh, one more time. Um, now that the mirror workers are actually up. Sync in progress. Yeah, so I'm gonna cancel it though. So um, it's, it's gonna, gonna start fresh. And um, now I basically see that um, mirroring has been scheduled, right? Um, oh. And in a couple of seconds, we will see here additional log entries that tell us about that content is starting to get mirrored. And that content will end up being in this repository. Um, so you can, on a per repository basis, mirror content from anything that's out there. And the nice thing is that because we deployed Claire, it will also scan that content, right? right? Um, so so that, you could mirror from anywhere and it's gonna get scanned no matter what. Exactly, this is, this is exactly how customers are essentially getting untrusted content into their you know, trusted data center environments mm -hmm. um, with, uh, um, uh, with, uh, with Quay, right? They're going to basically, um, uh, uh, use reprogramming to get it in and then they're going to scan it uh, with with clear and um you see mirroring okay. finished successfully so we now have a new tag which is that quite on tag mm -hmm. and security scanning has been queued so um in in one minute or so um we don't need yeah. to wait for this but in one minute or so that will I, I, I mean if you have the seconds to wait for it we can yeah you know, unless you gotta jump um, I'm just going to switch back here to Claire real quick um, um, and, and see if um, Claire is still happy now that it's actually going to do some work for us. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks, yeah. looks actually good. Seems like it's on some stuff. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, communicating. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's 577 oh, megabytes. Oh, that, yeah, I didn't see how big it was. Yeah, yeah it's going to take a little so, bit. I mean, it's not going to take long, but what Claire's going to what Claire's going to do is it's going to um, see that it didn't scan certain images yet. So um, it will actually um, download that image, um, unpack it on disk, and run security scans on it, right? And you know, it has a vast amount of um, a security a list of security vulnerabilities that it's going to identify, and um, that is uh, why um, you should not ask, underestimate how um, many resources Claire will be using in a very busy environment. So that's why Claire is a separate part, a separate container, and you can totally run it on a separate host and scale it independently of, of Quay um, as well. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you could have 20 Claire scanners and just three Claire nodes, or exactly. Quay nodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would totally make that uh, something that auto scales, right? Um, so that mm. you don't you know, waste um, uh, resources. Yeah, 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 obviously. But, but um, yeah, if, you're, if your group of Claire scanners are all pegged out at 80%, you might want to spin up another one, right? Yeah, you see here, Claire is actually starting to pack the CPU of the system, right? So it's um, running on all nodes here, here, and the second node's actually- Oh using yeah, it. wow. 
So it can get fairly resource intensive, but it's also doing important work, right? It's extracting all your content. So it recognizes all these RPMs that are installed in the base image or DVM packages or Alpine yeah. stuff. And it's, right. it's going to scan against all of that. Um, so that's basically what Clear uh, is doing all day long. And it does that whenever a new image arrives, right? Um, it starts it, yeah. And, and it'll, it'll index the content of that image and it'll basically um, look at that indexed content um, over time as security vulnerabilities are published and um, unfold, right? So even if this image has been scanned already, um, Claire will update you when there's a new CVE that came out. So that's yeah. why Quay and Claire is a two-way street, right? Um, Quay tells Claire when there's a new image and Claire tells Quay when it receives new data about an existing already scanned image, right? So, um, there it is, security scan passed. Um, Beautiful. That is actually nice. And it's uh, also important because, you know, we shouldn't have security vulnerabilities in our stuff. Oh, there are two. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Oh, well, I guess it just passed, went but... <laughs> huh. No, there it is. No. Oh, there we go. Okay. We go. It's fixable. Yeah, it's fixable. So, fixable basically means you just need to update that base image. So, in this case, um, the vulnerability seems to be the dbus package that comes from that rel um, base image so mm -hmm. i guess the engineering team has to do some work here to actually update uh, uh that image to the newest version so we can um you know we can do this with all the vulnerabilities but yeah, um, i mean but that's a simple clean thing right like that's exactly. just you know it's, update it's the, the, base the base image to the latest version exactly that's it Cool. Um, this is great. This is awesome, Daniel. Thank you so much. And again, you can create your own Quay.io account right now. Just hit up Quay.io, create an account, and off you go. And you'll have Quay and Claire scanning right there for free, you know, essentially. Exactly. Cool. So I hope um, this was somehow something one could follow. So if I would just repeat that, um, we had basically you know, existing databases, existing, uh, existing memory caches. We created buckets and we created a user that has access to the bucket. We created free machines and free AZs. Um, we deployed Claire. Um, we deployed um, a load balancer internally for Claire so that, um, you know, you can scale this up and down depending on the load, as you've seen, could be considerable load. And then we deployed Quay in the same way we deployed it on a single machine, only that we copied the config over to the two remaining nodes and put all of that behind a load balancer as well. And um, the result is what you have just seen. It's a fully functional, fully scalable, fault tolerant enterprise grade registry that scans your content happily as it comes in. And um, that sim job that I just started, um, that's going to run um, every 12 hours. So you're going to be up to date um, with the stuff as it is released in remote registries as well. Beautiful. Um, thanks yeah. for watching. Thanks for having me. Thank no, thank you, Daniel. Really appreciate it. We look to have you on in the future sometime, right? Like that'd be really cool. So I'll go back through the chat and see if we can come up with a couple of other extra topics for you, maybe. Uh, but just as the stream has finished, the local uh, baby turkey flock has arrived. So it it must be time to go because the turkeys are here. <laughs> if you follow my Twitter stream, you'll understand. Um, they're a very interesting bird looking uh, in their youth, uh, rather ragged anyways. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Appreciate it. You can always catch this on Twitch for the next 60 days. And then after that, it will be, our, it, well, right now it is archived on our YouTube channel. Um, and when in doubt, just, oh, the, tur the, the dog just saw the turkeys, if you heard that, my bad. Um, <clears throat> if, if you are looking for content that was on Twitch previously, uh, just head up our YouTube channel and then be sure to stick around for later today so we can talk on OpenShift Commons about uh, DevOps anti-patterns with Kevin Baer, an author of The Phoenix Project. And if you have never read The Phoenix Project, please go get yourself a copy of it. Um, and with that, thank you very much, Daniel. And we will see y'all soon, less than an hour. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day.